Titan Lady, look what I got today! My new tank top based on one of my favorite photos of Jelly wearing a crown, which brings me to the topic of my video today, photography. So I've been saving kittens for the better part of a decade, and one of the most important things about fostering is being able to find a forever home. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, how do I find a home for my foster kittens? I always say the same thing. You have to take beautiful photos. I think one of the most important ways we can showcase our foster kittens and how adorable they are is through photography. So today I want to help you guys improve your photography at home, but we're going to need to pull out the big guns. We're going to need a professional. <laughs> oh hey! Hi. This is Andrew. He's a cat photographer. I take pictures of cats almost every day of my life. Whether it be for clients, advertising agencies, or shelters, I know how to make a cat look good. Yeah, you do. Oh. I love taking photos of cats in shelters because I feel like it really helps find the homes. The thing about fostering cats and kittens in your home is that you don't have the advantage of being in an adoption center where people can walk in and meet them. And even if you take them out to an adoption event, they can be a little bit scared. It can be harder to see their personality. So photography is a great way to let their personalities come through. So this is my camera. It's pretty big and most people don't have this at home. And that's fine. You can still get a great photo with a cell phone. So today we're going to show you how to take photos on your phone. But before we do that, we're going to show you some cell phone photos gone wrong. Bum, bum, bum. Pause. Faux pause. Pause. Faux pause. So we took some photos of the donut kittens to show some common mistakes and they are not so good. So this is bear claw. So this is something I see a lot is where people are using a flash. Flash looks terrible on a cell phone. Flash absolutely destroys a photo. Directs the light at the subject, often washing out the photo, blinding the animal, and creating a strange gloss over the eyes. No flash allowed unless you happen to live in a dungeon in which case you're permitted to use the flash. Dungeon dwellers only. Turn the flash off. If you have to wait a couple hours until it's daylight, pick that time. He's kind of off to the side. Yeah, he's not the focal point of the photo. So what you want to do, unless you're trying to pull off something very artsy, is just put the kitten in the center of the photo and leave it at that. Do your best to make it as clear as possible without any distractions. How about that angle? It's like my space. 2006. <laughs> this is how we perceive animals 99% of the time from, you know, five feet to six feet up. This isn't a unique perspective whatsoever. So what I recommend is getting on eye level with the animal. This creates a kind of bond and rapport with the animal that is second to none, especially in photography. It gives you such a unique perspective and makes you feel some kind of empathy with the animal. This is how they perceive the world. Eye level on the ground. Next up we have Jelly Belly. Oh, she cute. She's cute, but if I saw this photo of her, I would have no idea how cute she is. She's really blurry. Yeah, this is one of the a main concern of mine when I see cell phone photos is that a lot of them are blurry. A lot of our cell phones aren't equipped with the kind of lenses and the ability to take fast moving photos. And kittens are very fast moving. So in this photo, there's a cell phone shadow that's projected onto the ground due to light being behind the photographer. So you're gonna need to move or change the angle. Anything that takes away from the actual focal point, which ought to be the kitten, is a no-no. So would you adopt Jelly based on this? Yes. Oh my God. Well, I would. Because you know her. Well, I just to kiss her belly every day. Oh my God, you do that. All right, now we have Fritter, and what's wrong with this photo? I mean, there's a nappy right there. <laughs> there's literally a pee pad behind him. But you'd be surprised. I see a lot of photos like this. Like, people will take a photo of a kitten and be like, I don't know why I can't find him a home, and there's literally, like, a pile of laundry behind that. So if your house is not super clean and you're trying to take photos of cats, spend five minutes, clear off that desk, put away that laundry, the cat will wait for you. It is imperative that you get a clear, clean photo of this animal. Yeah, because people want to be able to picture the animal in their home. So if your home looks dirty or if it just looks a little bit cluttered, they're going to look at that kitten and actually kind of judge the kitten based on that. They're going to say like, ooh, that's a dirty kitten. I don't really want that one in my home. So the pee pad's kind of gross. 
Um, we have some beautiful toes in the photo. Whose toes are those? Uh, might be mine, I don't know. But they're great looking toes. <laughs> don't put your toes in the photo. He's also not looking. Yeah, this is actually really important as well. For photos that I take of animals, I like to have them looking directly at the lens. It helps you connect with the animal. When you're trying to have a kitten adopted, you want the individuals who are looking at the photos to feel something. So when a kitten's looking at you in a photo, you feel connection with them. You feel a bond, instant rapport, and you want to deliver that to the internet, whoever might be adopting the kitten. So now we're going to show you how to take some good photos of cats. We're ready to take some photos. Well, this is a tactic I use a lot, which is show the cat a toy, let them play with it, and then take it away and put it behind the camera or lens so that they're looking directly at you. And right there, I was able to get a couple clear shots of her. So the background here is pretty clean. We're just on a couch. It's mostly focused on the cat. And we've opened up the blinds for all of the windows in this room to create as much natural light as possible. You might be noticing I'm taking a lot of photos, something that I do that I call spray and pray. So I'll just take a lot of photos and hope that one turns out well. It's also important when you're taking photos is to hold the camera as still as possible. If you're moving it around, um, it will innately be blurrier. Brace the cell phone in your hand and as you're taking photos, some of them are just going to be blurry, and it can be frustrating. You just got to keep at it. That's cute. So in this photo, she's looking towards the camera. What I would do with this is crop it in a little bit closer so that she is more of the focal point. As far as light levels and blurriness, she's, she's in a prime position. So I'm going to try to take a photo of Bearclaw here. As you can see from the angle, he is backlit. There's light coming from behind him. It's going to be very difficult for me to get a clear shot of him without him being completely in the dark. So it's really going to make the features of the cat indistinguishable. I can get behind the table and take a photo of him. The lighting is perfect for him. Another method to get a kitten's attention is to make funny noises. <coughs> crinkle of some sort and then like I said before put it behind the camera so they look at it you want to get their attention with something and then put it behind the camera they'll look right at you so when you have this kind of natural light behind you there's no need for a flash if you need to wait a couple hours until it's the proper time of day then do that that's worth it one of the other things I discussed is getting on the ground getting eye level with the animal so I'm eye level with fritter now on the ground I'm playing with the toy to get him to respond. And then when he's in front of the camera, I will start to take photos. Just take time. You gotta be patient to do this, but it really pays off. So to wrap it up, a couple tips. When you get on the ground, get eye level with them. Don't use the flash. Be in natural light. Get them to pay attention to you. Try to have a clean backdrop. Cell phone photos aren't perfect, but with a little patience, effort it can really change the way your animals are presented. I honestly believe that having great photos is the number one way to attract great forever homes. So I hope this video gives you guys some good ideas to get started showcasing your foster cats and kittens at home. If you're not following Andrew yet, you absolutely should be. Follow him on Instagram at I am the great went or check out his website thegreatwentphoto.com. He also has a book coming out Shop Cats of New York, which is going to show a lot of his beautiful cat photography, so definitely purchase one of those. So if you like this video and what we presented, if you have any questions or comments or want to see something more in depth, just let us know in the comments below. We'll try to address it and maybe follow up with another video.